What's up, what's up, what's up? Let me say hello to you all in the chat. Check my audio too. And then we're gonna go live on IG. Y'all give me one second. Um I'll figure out. Give me one second, y'all. What's good? What's good? What's going on? Yeah, I'm trying to check this audio and then I'm going to go live on IG. Hold tight. What's up? Peace, Carrie Bay. I hope all is well. Peace, Carrie Bay. I hope all okay. is well. We're good. Peace, Bay, I hope oh. All right, let's go. Good stuff. Y'all know what time it is. It is time to talk about scholarships. I titled this live, How to Prepare for College, How to Prepare for the Fall 2020 Semester, because there are some strategic pieces of information I want to share with you all today. Um, give me one second while I go live on IG too and set it up on my tripod. But um, and I'm gonna type in the title over there as well. So they have it too. But while we're doing that, y'all let me know how are you doing? Drop a comment in the chat. Tell me what's going on. How's your day going? We're gonna jump into this conversation. Give me one second. How to prepare for the fall 20. I'm always flipping this camera. How to prepare for the fall 2020 semester. Everybody on IG, y'all drop a comment. Let me know if you can um if you can hear me. If you can hear me. Yeah, I'm hungry too. Is that Rodney? What's up, Rodney? I hope I was away. I haven't talked to you in a minute. What's up? What's up? Good stuff. All right, let me pin this comment. So, hey, hey, how you doing? Okay, you can hear me. Good stuff. Awesome. Trying to do two. What's up, Rodney? All right, y'all. It won't pin. Okay, cool. All right, here we go. So, what's good, y'all? It's your girl, Danielle Jeffress. I'm back to talk about scholarships. We do this every single Sunday at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I go live on YouTube and I go live on Dope for Degrees. Oh, not Dope for Degrees, on my Instagram to any, answer any questions you all have. I titled this live, How to Prepare for the fall 2020 semester. The point in doing that was I was talking to a lot of my clients um, over this week. I know I haven't been as frequent on YouTube. I promised to catch up last week, but this coronavirus is just, is messing up my whole entire schedule. So I'm trying to get it together. Um, but the goal is to really understand how we ensure that students don't drop the ball because when you go back to school in the fall 2020 semester, it is crazy. My sister said, I just watched my 110th movie. Yay, quarantine, you are funny. Good stuff. But uh, no, I was talking to clients this week and we were discussing what stage they're in and preparing for the fall 2020 semester, especially those students who are graduating from high school this semester. And they said because they don't have access to the guidance counselors, they struggle with making sure that they dotted all their I's and crossed all their T's. So I wanted to go live today to give you all some advice to answer any questions you have. Hey, Miss Harold, I hope all is well to answer any questions you have and really just be a resource. So y'all know all the way. Yes, Rona is in the way. It's in the way. She's exactly right. Um, but we're going to push through it. We're going to learn how to persevere because if we learn the gaps right now, if we figure everything else out right now, if the situation presents itself again, we won't be in a uh, state of ambiguity, of uncertainty. We'll know we'll have a game plan moving forward. So what's up, Corey? He doesn't want me to call him CLA screen. Corey, What's up? So the thing, the biggest thing I was telling, I talked to high school students, I talked to middle school students, elementary school students, and college students this week. And one thing they kept telling me was, well, I don't know what I should be doing right now because my guidance counselor isn't giving me any information. And I know the um, college decision day is May 1. And so I see you, Corey, I see you. So this is my biggest factor. And I'm going to drop, I'm going to try to comment on both of these streams to give you all some information. As always, ask any question you have about scholarships. Don't be scared to drop a question or a comment in the chat. My edges are acting crazy. That's why y'all see keep seeing me playing with my hair. The number one thing I want you to focus on while we are waiting for the coronavirus to pass away and preparing for the fall 2020 semester is knowing the payment deadlines, okay? Know the payment deadline for your respective school. All right, type it in. YouTube, I'm just typing on Instagram. Number one, know the payment deadlines. If you all can share this live with someone, let them know. If you want to um, share the replay with someone on YouTube, let them know too. So know the payment deadlines. What do I mean by that? So when I went to school for my 
for my first semester of Virginia Tech, I'm repping Tech right now, first semester of Virginia Tech, I went in the fall 2015 semester, so this was five years ago, and I knew my bill was due August, it was due like August 15th, something like that. If you didn't have the bill paid in full by August 15th, then they will offer you student loans or they could possibly put a hold on your account. Now, if the college puts a hold on your account, that means that you won't be able to take classes for that respective semester. And that's something you don't want to happen. So you definitely want to know the payment deadlines. I worked with a client this week and we were talking about her accounts and she realized that the payment deadline for her university is July 15th. And she's going to have to come up with $15,000 by July 15th. Well, how do you do that? That's a great question. Knowing that um, a lot of things are closed right now, they're trying to get letters of recommendation and transcript from teachers. When everyone's schedule is hectic, how are we going to put all these dots together and make sure everyone succeeds? Well, that's the time to double down on the scholarship process. That's the time to put forth more effort and more work into making sure you're applying for scholarships because the beautiful part about it, hey, VT alumni, join the conversation. Thank you. The beautiful part about it is that scholarships don't close when, when things like this happen. Scholarships can be done virtually, so it's up to you to take advantage of the opportunity and be proactive. Now, keep in mind, every time you find a scholarship, one of the first things you want to do is see if it asks for a letter of recommendation. Why would you do that? Why would you see if a scholarship asks for a letter of recommendation? Keep it simple. That person you're going to ask to write that letter of recommendation for you, they need the time to do so. So I know I owe y'all 23 scholarships. I'm going to get it to you. I'm just trying to figure out how to manage all my business and all the craziness stuff that happens outside of social media and YouTube for Dofer Degrees um, and trying to build all that into my schedule. But what I will say is that the first scholarship I'm going to tell you about is Jay-Z scholarship. It is called the Sean Carter Foundation Scholarship. You can literally Google this and find it while we're talking. I'm going to type it in here. Sean Carter Foundation. Oh, y'all scratch that. Don't pay attention to that IG. Sean Carter. Wow. Foundation. Scholarship. Okay. Sean Carter Foundation Scholarship. Here y'all go, YouTube. Sean Carter Foundation Scholarship. A scholarship open April 1st. It's due. Um, awesome, Ms. Harold. That's fantastic. She said it's on her list. It's due April 30th. Um, it's due April 30th. It requires a letter of recommendation, a personal statement, a statement about your personal circumstances, and also a essay. Uh, what else? A list of your educational activities, uh, your personal information. It has like eight or nine different things you have to do for this one scholarship. And so what's important is that when you open that scholarship and you notice that it asks for a letter of recommendation or a request that you it asks that you put in someone's email for them to, um, I don't know what this thing is. Okay. I do y'all hold tight. I got social media, a social media timer on my phone. So I hope it doesn't end the stream or whatever. But if it does, we're just going to hop back on. Um, so the biggest thing is once you open a scholarship and ask you to ask for a letter of recommendation, go straight ahead, identify who you want to write that letter of recommendation and get that to them ASAP. There's a video on Dope for Degrees YouTube channel titled How to ask for a letter of recommendation. I'll have to go back and add all these links in when I go back and edit the stream, but it explains how you would ask for a letter of recommendation. Now with the Jay-Z scholarship, they don't have to submit a actual letter of recommendation. It asks them to submit like 150 to 300 word statement about who you are. But when you choose this person to, act, to write this letter of recommendation for you, you wanna make sure that they know you beyond just a general conversation. If you choose a teacher, y'all scratch that comment. I can't type it there on my phone. But you want to know, you want to have a relationship with this person who's going to write this letter of recommendation for you. My biggest thing is if you choose a teacher, make sure they can speak to your character, your integrity, your leadership, your work ethic, and your community service. You, they should be familiar with those aspects of your life. They may not be able to touch on or acknowledge all points of that in the um, request when they complete the request, but at least they are familiar with that. How to ask for a letter of recommendation. Make sure y'all watch that video if you need any help with asking for a letter of recommendation. Okay. Now let's move on to this part of the scholarship in and of itself or any scholarship in general that asks for you to write a personal statement, a statement about your special circumstances and a separate essay. 
That's a lot of work, a completely separate essay. A personal statement is something that communicates to the reader who you are, your goals, and why they, select, why they should select you for this award. A personal statement sets you apart from the competition. It is an opportunity for you to bring your identity to the forefront, but while also telling a story creatively. So for instance, let's say the personal statement says, describe your educational goals, where you're from and what you hope to achieve. In your personal statement, I'll speak for myself. I would say something along the lines of, it's often said education is the key to success, but I strongly disagree. Self-awareness is what really opens the door. Because if I know myself better than you do, I know which decisions to make that are best for me in my future. It is my hope that I will take my degree from Virginia Tech in communication and use it to change the world, to help more students go to college and graduate debt free and help them live their best dreams. Something along the lines of that. I'm coming off the cuff, y'all, so bear with me. But that's my personal statement. Now, the essay for this scholarship is totally different. Y'all give me one step. Y'all give me one second. I'm going to try to pull up the essay, what the essay requires on my iPad so I can read it to you all. Um, I don't want to tell you anything wrong. So the essay prompt says, to whom much is given, much is expected. As a result, as a result of this core philosophy, all selected scholars must agree to meet certain expectations. One of these expectations is to complete at least 25 hours of community service hours. Please describe what specific actions you would take in order to meet this expectation and explain why giving back to the community is important. Once again, those are two different statements. The personal statement is asking you to bring your education to the forefront of the conversation, and the essay is asking you to talk about service. Keep in mind, I just said when you ask for a letter of recommendation, choose someone who can speak to your character, your integrity, your work ethic, your community service, and your, um, your educational goals, your leadership ability, all of those things. Because in this one scholarship, in Jay Z's scholarship, Sean Carter's scholarship, you have an opportunity to touch on different aspects from your perspective within these different statements and essays and things, but you want that person who speaks to you on your behalf to be able to edify everything you said about yourself. What does edification mean? What does edifying look like? It means to build you up. It's almost as if you're building a, a um, you're, bu you're, bu you're building the steps to your success, right? You're laying the foundation. You're building the steps to your success. And your goal is as you put a brick down, as you lay a brick down, someone else helps lay one too. So you want them to be able to speak in the best way they can speak or edify you is to cite experiences or give examples of how you've led a movement, how you've been a leader in the classroom or outside of the classroom. Y'all drop uh, any questions y'all have about that. Is that making sense? Then I'm going to show you how to use the, the um, special circumstances statement to your advantage too. Oh, this thing is tripping. Okay. IG. Okay, IG, I think we're back. My social media timer thing went off, so my apologies. But if y'all have any questions, y'all drop them in the chat. Let me know. Um, if not, we're going to keep rolling. Now, let's look at the special circumstances. So we've talked about the personal statement, point blank, period. Hope y'all can see me, IG. That, yeah. <laughs> my friend Justin talking about my mug. My mom, y'all, my mom gave me this mug. She got it from Amazon. It says boss. Um, and it's got like hardworking, a thousand percent. It's like nutritional values on this thing. So I might have to take a picture of it and post it on IG so I can see it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love you too. Good love. Good love. But, um, all right. So you have the personal statement that's asking you to talk about your educational goals. And then you have, um, y'all are funny. It's so you, y'all cracking me up. <laughs> it's just talking about educational goals. And then the essay is asking you to talk about your service. Now it's an opportunity to talk about special circumstances. It's an opportunity to show them how you've overcome certain things. Last week, I said the two components you'll want to have in every single scholarship essay is your ability to talk about your service and your selfish, selfless ambition. Once again, service and selfless ambition. What is service and selfless ambition? I feel like my lighting isn't good on IG, y'all. Oh, give me a second. Okay. Service and selfless ambition. What does that mean? How are you going to help other people? How are you currently helping other people? That's one thing that helped me win a lot of my scholarship essays was my ability to talk about my service I did with my Boys and Girls Club. And when I got to Virginia Tech, I was no longer at the club every day. I was still serving my community 
through different social activities, clubs, and also through Dope for Degrees, teaching students how to win scholarships to go to college and graduate debt free for free during my first and second semester. And so what happens is when you're out here doing community service, whether you're volunteering with a local club or organization or your sorority or fraternity, what have you, when you're giving of yourself without expecting anything in return, you separate yourself apart from the competition. It's all in the way you tell the story. So once you have that service element, here comes the second part where you're talking about selfless ambition. All students are ambition. Are, are, all students are ambitious. You're going to school to get an education, to use education to your advantage. You want to accomplish something, right? Now the question comes in, how are you going to accomplish what you're going to accomplish? And what are you going to do once you made that, once you made your dreams a reality? I'll put it this way. Okay, good stuff. Go ahead, Justin. Good stuff. So if I, I kept saying I'm going to go to college, I kept saying I'm going, I'm going to go to college and graduate debt free. And when I figure out how to do it, I'm going to teach other people how to do the same thing. So if we're looking at the Sean Carter scholarship, you've already talked about your educational goals in the personal statement. You talk about your essay In the essay. You talk about your service and in special circumstances. You want to talk about any obstacles or hardships you've had to overcome. For me, I would talk about my parents' illnesses, helping my parents in the household when they were both sick, trying to finish school strong, trying to serve the community, trying to be a leader in all these things and how that shaped me, how that shaped my character. Other people, their stories may be different. Like your stories may be that you have to, um, you've lost a, a sibling. You've lost a cousin of gun violence. Like you had to overcome, you had a disease as a kid that you had to fight through. You're a doctor. I don't know. Everyone's story is different, but it's how you tell your story. And keep in mind, it doesn't have to be a pity story. It, it doesn't have to be a pity story at all. It's just about how you tell it. So Justin asked, what is some language that you would maybe encourage application writers to use around selfless ambition? The key word with selfless ambition is it should be a goal. Like there should be proof of achievement, basically. And then there should also be reciprocity. So I'll say it this way. I'll say what I often said, selfless ambition. I said, I'm going to go to college and graduate debt free. And when I do figure it out, after I figure it out, I'm going to teach other people how to do the same thing. So I'm going to go to college and graduate debt free. That's the goal. That's the accomplishment. Now here comes the reciprocity. How do I give back to those who've given to me? Because keep in mind, scholarship, someone's investing in you. How are you going to return the favor? How are you going to keep the cycle going? I want to teach other people how to do the same thing. So selflessness is often centered around giving. So there should be a, a statement or a phrase in your writing that displays or communicates how you're going to give, how you're going to give back. All right. And then also ambition means you have to go after something. This should be something that they, they're going to look at and say, wow, that's a huge goal. How are you going to accomplish it at 22? How are you going to accomplish it at 20? How are you going to accomplish it at 25? Like it should make them sit back and ask themselves, what can we do to support this person at, as they seek to achieve this endeavor, as they seek to embark upon this journey or what have you? Okay. Justin also said, love it. Practical applications with the knowledge you're getting thanks to the scholarship money reciprocity makes perfect sense. Most definitely. Scholarships, anytime you can incorporate this theme within your writing, of someone gave to you and you're giving back. That's all scholarships are about. It's giving the circle of giving because they're investing in you. What, how would a scholarship provider get a return on their investment? If they're going to take the time to invest in you to help you get an education, how would they get a return? It's by helping you achieve your goals and become a better citizen and taking some stress and pressure off your back while expecting you to do the same thing for someone else. Point blank period. All right. So that's one thing, how to prepare for the fall 2020 semester. Know the payment deadline. I just broke down a whole scholarship to you. Know the payment deadline. When is the first, when is the money due? Point blank period. It's May, no, it's April right now. Nine times out of 10, it's going to be due by August at the latest. I always say average three scholarship submissions per week, okay? But since the coronavirus is hit, I would double that up to six. And if you can't hit six, at least hit four. Justin also said, what if I have a hard time shining a light on my challenges? What if I feel like it makes me appear weak, et cetera? That's a big part. I struggle with that myself. I'm not good when it comes to vulnerability. Um, I don't like being vulnerable. But vulnerability is not a weakness. It's a sign of strength because it shows that there's a soft place in your heart. 
There's something that you've overcome. There's something that means a lot to you and you're continuing to push forward every day. I'll say it this way. Perseverance always wins. Perseverance always wins. And sometimes the moments where we're the weakest or we're in our darkest and deepest moments of despair and we don't really want to come out to the public about it are the moments you are the things you have to communicate in your essay. I'll put it to you this way to have to sit down and talk about watching my mother get sick at the age of 17. I cried so many times. I, I had relatives who were helping me with my scholarships. And I was like, I'm not doing this because I had never spoken about it in public. Like my family watched it happen. And there were family members I just didn't talk to about. It. They were like, hey, how are you doing with your mom? I was like, I'm good. Like I just shut down. I don't want to talk about it because I'm going to cry. I don't want to cry, first of all. And I don't I haven't put my thoughts together to articulate how much it's really hurting me. And so when you struggle with that, sometimes you have to spend time talking to yourself about it. Just talk about it and voice create a voice memo. Talk about it and shoot a video. Just get comfortable sitting in a quiet space talking to yourself about it without having an echo chamber, without hearing anyone else's opinion about it, without um, hearing anyone communicate their thoughts about it. Just talk to yourself about it. And then once you get used to formulating your words in your own safe space, then you can begin to put them on paper. That's what I had to do because I was like, this is just not something I want to discuss. But what I found was talking about it helped me to process my emotions. It became therapeutic for me. It's something I often do today when I feel like there's too much going on. I'll get my journal out and I'll start writing or I create a voice memo or I shoot a video or something like that to express myself so I get to release those emotions. And so what if you have a hard time shining a light on your challenges? It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. Vulnerability is a sign of strength. And the biggest thing is keep this in mind. Selflessness helps people get through their obstacles too. So you're not the only one who's going through it. And you telling your story could help someone else overcome their challenges as well. So just be vulnerable. Be willing to be open. Um, Justin, let me know if that was helpful. Great questions, by the way. Fantastic questions. Y'all don't talk about my mug. I might have to post a link in my story or something. I don't know. But um, no, it's all good. Just push through. Just push through. Let's see. Any more questions, y'all? It is. What's up, John? It is 321. We have like uh, nine minutes left. Justin said, yes, yes, love it. Vulnerability is not a sign of weakness, sign of strength. Instead, selflessness will help others get through their obstacles too. Telling your story can't help someone. Most definitely overcome their challenges. I'm out here with the double comment. Hey, let's get it. I appreciate you for being, for engaging. Let's get it. Loving it. Just share this on my story too. Keep it healthy, fam. Yes. Hope your nation all day. Wreck it all day long. Y'all, it's good love over here. But let's, the, the last thing I want to tell y'all about how to prepare for the fall 2020 semester. The biggest thing is prepare yourself mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Just prepare your entire being for the fall 2020 semester. What I've seen is a lot of colleges are taking away the requirements for you to have to um, take the SAT and the ACT. They're taking away the test scores requirements for this upcoming semester. So let some stress off your plate. You don't have to worry about getting a 27 on the ACT or you don't have to worry about passing the SAT with a certain test score, what have you. That's stress off your plate. What you do need to prepare yourself for is that transition into college, knowing this fall 2020 semester will probably be the most historically challenging yet innovative college transition period ever. And that was a long, I've worded that a long way. Anyway, these colleges are going to have to learn how to prepare for the new influx of students and keep everyone safe. So everyone's off the cuff. Everyone's going off the cuff. Colleges have canceled graduation, which I understand. It's everyone who's dealing with that. High schools, students, your graduation has been canceled. Prime has been canceled. I am sorry. I know it hurts. I know it's painful. I don't put it past you. I'm sorry you have to deal. You have to, you're having to deal with that right now. But I said it last week. I'll say it again. Celebrate yourself. Take a moment to celebrate yourself. What we might do on um, IG Live and Dope for Degrees YouTube channel is just take some time to just celebrate y'all. I'll put on my cap and gown I wore last year. We'll have a whole commencement party. Whatever y'all want to do, we, we're going to turn up. We're going to celebrate because y'all deserve to be celebrated. You push through. You fought hard. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's turn up one good time. But what I will say is don't neglect the opportunity to prepare. 
many colleges canceled and high schools canceled graduation because of the fact that they wanted to take time to get themselves ready for the next semester. They spend years, sometimes two years preparing for graduation that lasts three hours. Like they spend years, a whole year or half a year, what have you, preparing for that moment. And so it wouldn't have been wise to continue the planning process knowing that there are so many uncertainties with the coronavirus. Like who knows when this thing is gonna end? And so I applaud the colleges and the higher education institutions and the post-secondary institutions and all these places for making those wise decisions right now though it's crushing for a lot of people, it's still an opportunity for us to celebrate. We're still gonna celebrate, it's just an opportunity to do things differently. Tradition and traditional infrastructures are being, you're seeing the cracks in their foundation right now. So you just gotta push through, push through. Y'all, any questions, any thoughts on how we did today's live? Um, any thoughts on that? Remember, check out the Sean Carter Scholarship, see if you qualify, double check to make sure you qualify for that scholarship if you do. Watch the video I put out this week regarding that scholarship and the other videos I tell you about regarding other scholarship opportunities. Some of the scholarships I will announce in this sprint and the sprint will not be open right now, but I want to share them with you so you can put them on your calendar so you can set a reminder to look for that application when it does open again in the fall or next year, what have you. Um, so don't get frustrated if I give you like six of them that you can't actually apply for. Just know that you want to add them to your list. You want to get ready to apply for them. ASAP. Okay. Another thing for parents right now, as you are helping your students cope with everything that's going on, helping them manage their emotions, you're managing your own emotions with school. I mean, with work and bills and all these things. Remember to embrace this moment because this moment, this quality time you have with your kids, who knows when you're going to get that again. So though it may not be the most comfortable situation, though it may not be an opportunity where, what, though it may be an opportunity where there's a lot of ambiguity, a lot of uncertainty, you don't know what's going to happen next. Try to keep a state of peace in your household as much as possible. Try to in, allow everyone to enjoy the time you all have together. Make the best of it. To be honest, one thing I wish I could do right now is go home. I wish I could go home for Mother's Day in May. Hopefully this thing will be lifted by then. But, um, I wish I could go see my grandma, go see my family in Danville, what have you. But what it's done is it's brought us together in a different way. And so take some time just to check in with your kid. Hey, how do you think we should handle this as a family? Are we doing this the best way? What's some things you miss about school? I talk to my clients every week and they're like, I miss the social aspect of school. My friends and I, I don't get to see them. Um, my social development skills have not been the same because I'm out of school. My parents argue all the time at home. So how do you handle that situation? FaceTime your friends. Y'all come up with your own project. Some of my clients right now have decided they're going to start a business in the midst of coronavirus with their friends. They're like, hey, we're just going to figure out how to sell T-shirts online um, through Teespring, and we're going to rock it out that way. We're going to practice our marketing skills. We're going to learn a new craft. We're going to learn how to speak a new language. I'm like, let's go. Let's get it. Like, some, You have more free time on your, hand right now, on your hands right now than you ever had before, and so take advantage of it. And also take some time to get to know people at a deeper level right now because you all are together more than you have ever been before. Probably. I don't know everyone's situation. But that's my advice. I'm going to end it early, y'all, unless y'all have some more questions, some more thoughts. I'll try to um, put it on my story where y'all can get this mug because y'all were talking about it, the boss mug. I'll post a picture, too. Um, but that's all I have for y'all. I love y'all. I appreciate everyone for joining I appreciate all the support and I will see you all. I'll see you all this week with new videos. See you next Sunday at three o'clock. Let's get it. Justin said four words, 10 out of 10. Great job, Danielle. Keep sharing the knowledge. I appreciate you. I love y'all too. Um, and y'all have a great Sunday. Talk to you soon.